Hey, thanks for clicking on the video. Today, we are talking about Adept Loot. Just this past Tuesday, Master of Salvation's Edge was released. And with that, we got the weekly rotating challenge and we're finally able to earn Adept versions of the weapons we've been getting familiar with. So today's video is gonna be us looking at each of these weapons and trying to figure out if it's actually worth our time grinding for an Adept role. That means looking at how Adept mods affect each weapon and also looking at how having multiple perks in one column can make a weapon better. Which, so if you didn't know, adept weapons now can get multiple perk options in one column. And I know multiple perks in one column has been kind of common for a while now, but they seem to have really kicked it up a notch with this raid, as you can easily get three in each column on each roll. So we'll be looking to see if that actually makes an impact on what a god roll is. So to jump straight into it, let's look at the Critical Anomaly Sniper, as I think this is going to be the most important one if you're looking for adept weapons, but not for just being adept, which has us focusing on adept mods first and foremost. So here we are in Foundries, just so we can see how the numbers change in real time. And we're gonna first turn our attention toward adept mods, like I just said. Now, the thing with Critical Anomaly is obviously we want Chill Clip with Bait and Switch. That's kind of the god roll. The other thing you could do is Reconstruction Bait and Switch, and that's just gonna be like your best general use roll, especially since Chill Clip doesn't stack with multiple Chill Clip users. So this is just the safe way if you're looking for a good sniper. And then with reconstruction, we of course want to get the largest mag size possible, which in our case means using extended mag, which gives us four total, and then having a backup mag, which will bring us to five. That means whenever reconstruction is activated, we'll get 10 whole shots. Now, like I said, does this change with adept mods? Well, looking at the same combination, extended mag, reconstruction, and instead using adept mag, it changes nothing. We actually just lose 15 handling. Now, however, there is one distinction, and that is with adept mag, we can actually change our option to tactical mag and get stability and reload speed. But, you know, looking at the stats, I think I would rather just run extended mag and then a normal backup mag so I'm not losing the handling which is actually important when you want to proc bait and switch. So right out the gates, Critical Anomaly being an adept weapon doesn't actually matter. However, what really, really does matter is like I was waffling on about in the beginning, having multiple perks in one column. Similar to how Edge Transit has a six out of five God roll, or even a seven out of five God roll, Critical Anomaly here has a similar case, where if you actually get chill clip, and reconstruction in the same column, you can proc reconstruction, get 10 shots in the mag as you go into a DPS phase, and then just swap to chill clip. That should give you eight shots of slowing bullets, which can freeze, and ultimately that is going to give you the best performance as you'll get the benefits of reconstruction and then the damage increase that comes with chill clip on top of bait and switch like normal. There's already been a lot of theorizing that Critical Anomaly is actually quite the good sniper, and this will just make it way better. But again, where adept mods are concerned, you don't actually want to use them. Now then, on to our next weapon, which is the non-denouement bow, which is, I'm kind of doing this in order of most important to least important. This one is also pretty intriguing, but now it is actually because of the adept mods. So for a precision bow, and again, we're going off the god roll of Archer's Tempo and Volt Shot because, well, you know, it's really, really good. The minor perks that go on with that are Elastic String and then Compact Arrow Shaft. That gives us the fastest reload and just the fastest draw time, which right now we're at 612 draw time. And then if, you know, we put on a Masterwork, we get down to 576. Now at base with the crafted non-denouement, that's as low as you get. But if you manage to get adept non-denouement, then you can of course slot in adept draw time. Unfortunately on Foundry, it doesn't actually show the decrease, but according to Destiny 2 Data Compendium, this is decreasing our draw time by a further 40 milliseconds. And then of course, if you have Archer's Tempo proct, that is a 0.75x multiplier, meaning you are getting truly the fastest possible draw time. And while again, we're talking about milliseconds of change, that is important when that's all that really matters on a bow. All that matters is how many errors you can get out. And Adept non Denouement is definitely holding the edge up on any normal versions of this bow. Now, okay, yeah, sure, Adept mods 
depth draw time, it's pretty easy to take a guess that it's going to affect this bow positively. What about having any different perk combinations or having multiple perk options? Is there anything there? And the answer is not really. Archer's Tempo and Volt Shot is just the go-to. There's no overflow or anything weird you can do outside of that. So besides maybe a shoot to loot, if you ever really wanted it, you're good just using those extra perks as a way to have RNG on your side, in which case it should make it a bit easier on you trying to get the god roll. So moving on to our next weapon, which again, kind of decreasing in importance of having the adept roll, we have Summum Bonum. Very funny sword, and you'll actually notice there isn't that many options. To be honest, I don't really know what the god roll of this sword is. I would expect it's either Relentless Strikes with Bait and Switch or Surrounded. Maybe even a play can be made for Deconstruct, but ultimately I do think there are just better swords. Granted, I know there is a small group of people that will definitely vouch for this weapon. But again, in the terms of it being adept, does that really matter? And the answer is kind of. Looking at our adept mods first, again, we have adept mag, which does just increase our reserves like normal backup mag does. Here it goes to 60 with normal backup mag, also keeping it at 60. So that doesn't really do anything. But then you do have Adept Impact, which simply just adds a little bit of extra damage. Use this in tandem with Jagged Edge, and you have the most damage you can possibly get out of a sword. Once again, we're talking very, very little variance in damage, but similar to how Nandunaman was just more draw time is a better bow, Summon Bonum, more impact is a better sword. Again, nothing too revolutionary, but if you do get an adept Summon Bonum, it's probably worth keeping. And also following suit with Nande Numan, there's no crazy swap offs. Personally, I would like the options of having Surrounded or Bait and Switch both on the same sword. That way, in Surrounded scenarios, you can use that. And when you can't, you can use Bait and Switch. But for anything in the left column, you're not really doing much. Deconstruct is, well, not a whole lot. I've heard a little bit about it, but now that I think about it, probably not the play. Relentless Strikes is likely what you're gonna do. And you know, maybe you could do attrition orbs on top of that if you're doing some weird speedrun stuff. But we are getting closer to that. Do I really need this over just having my enhanced craftable role? Which then takes us to nullify our next primary weapon. And this is where things get a bit more standard when it comes to what is good and what isn't. It's not so nebulous. The first thing is my personal god roll, heal clip and incandescent. I'm not very creative, but yeah, that's what I want. And where being an adept weapon will actually help a lot here is the ability to do adept reload. With that mod, and if you manage to get a reload speed masterwork, you can then commit everything to lowering that reload, which means you also go for flared magwell, which ultimately brings your reload speed to 80, which is very high. And that's kind of my one complaint when I'm going for a heel clip incandescent weapon is you don't have a lot of investment towards actually reloading the gun, which you need to do. Here though, you can build into that. And while you're definitely gonna want the reload speed masterwork, if you have nothing, the adept reload will still take you to 70. So all in all, that's a pretty fast reload. I don't have this roll myself, so I don't know if it's actually feeling that good. That should keep it pretty snappy and actually allow you to rely on that heel clip more often than not. But again, does it need to be adept? Not really. We're not being very creative anymore. Which then takes us to Eminence, another very standard weapon. Personally, my god roll for this one would be Demolitionist with Strategist, just for the ultimate ability regen. And then for our adept mods, you don't have a whole lot that does much here. I would probably vouch for adept mag, which we can see brings our magazine to 41 at base. And then, you know, even going back to normal backup mag, it's still 41 without the handling loss. So again, we're in another situation where adept mods just don't mean a whole lot. Where things could get a little spicier for this weapon is when we talk about having multiple perk options, specifically just for Slice and Chaos Reshaped. These are both interesting perks that work situationally. So you could use, let's say, you know, your Demolitionist plus Strategist role as you go up into a boss fight or something like that, and then just swap it over to Slice. Or if you're in a scenario where you don't need the ability regen and just want damage, then you can do Chaos Reshaped. But like I've been repeating over and over, does it really need to be an adept weapon? And the answer is no. Which then takes us to our last weapon, forthcoming deviance, the glaive. I literally haven't heard a single person talk about this weapon. And then looking at it under the lens of should it be adept? Eh, it's what it is what it is. 
You can use a depth mag to get it up to six. You can use normal backup mag to get it up to six. Pair this with reconstruction and you've got 12 shots in the mag regardless. What's more is there's no charge time or impact or anything like that that we had on bows and swords. So ultimately, whatever the god roll is, just looking at it here, probably reconstruction plus chain reaction. Adept forthcoming deviance isn't gonna make that much better. You do have some wiggle room by being able to swap reconstruction off similar to what we were talking about with critical anomaly but critical anomaly by itself is a super niche thing like would you even want to swap reconstruction off and i don't think anybody's taking forthcoming deviance into a setting that warrants that type of gameplay so to say it one more time does this need to be adept? De definitely not. And that's all six weapons. It was a bit of a long-winded one. I kind of yapped in this video. Let me know down in the comments if you agreed or if there's anything I missed. I don't have all of these rolls. I'm just looking at the numbers here and I do think I can extrapolate and make pretty much correct assumptions just from the data. But you know, if you got an adept forthcoming deviance and it's just the best thing ever paired with a certain adept mod, you know, adept Icarus, whatever, let me know down in the comments below because I would love to have some things to check out. And once again, if you made it this far, thank you so much for your support. It means a ton to me. And if you want to support me and support the channel, a like, a comment, a subscription goes such a long way. We're on the road to 9,000 subscribers and I'm really happy to have you here. If you want to support me and support the channel, but you can't think of a comment, comment down below, adept loot. And with that, as usual, I hope you are having a great day and I hope to see you around.